Awesome. We're set? All right, so welcome. We're going to talk about the five R's of Instagram marketing. Um, you know, like I said, everything kind of has just evolved, and, and there's been no drop of sweat that has been wasted in my life. And these five R's actually um, have been modified, but they were part of my actual thesis for my uh, capstone for my master's degree, and that was on marketing financial services and products to African Americans. And so it just came into play with this presentation and talking about Instagram. So when we talk Instagram, one of the things I want to tie back to with what Kevin was just referring to was the global aspect of being able to be a small business owner or an entrepreneur in today's world. And I kind of want to differentiate between Facebook and Instagram really quickly. Um, as many of you probably know, and if you don't, you definitely should know, that Facebook purchased Instagram for a billion dollars um, last April, and many are now saying that they got a great deal, and I agree. So what is Instagram versus Facebook? Well, Instagram basically is a photo sharing app that allows an amateur and novice like myself to be able to pr create really nice photos to tell your, your story. And with, one of the key differences between that and Facebook is that it basically is global from the gate. Facebook really is doing a great job of getting people down into their little social circle and kind of keeping them there with the technology and the search and the way they're doing the news feed and the edge and that. It really is kind of putting you in this little box because every now and then there are friends like I forget about because they're not in my news feed. Well, that's because Facebook is determining who's in my news feed. Whereas with Instagram, people are doing more searching and they're searching by hashtag. And so I have fans from all around the world. The person who has engaged the most on my Instagram page is actually in Australia. Um, I have people in the UK, in Russia, in Germany, in Texas. <laughs> yeah, that's, so, cool. that's so cool. Yeah, it's very, very cool. So if you want to just hit the next slide, please. All right, and let me put you up there so I can see it. So um, is that the second slide? Uh, that the is third the, slide? the second slide after the intro. Or, excuse me, first slide after the intro. Okay. This one or the next one? Nope, this one. So how much is a picture worth? You know, there are 150 million users on an Instagram. And like I talked about in my introduction, I kind of didn't want to do Instagram at first. I also didn't want to do Facebook at first. And it, both were brought to me by, by friends. And the reason was, as I've said, I have a now 22-year-old and a 16-year-old daughter. And I felt like I belonged on LinkedIn, and that was it. I didn't feel like I should be on <laughs> Facebook or Instagram. But once I got on both, I immediately became hooked. And so I'm one of 150 million users that uploads 55 million photos to Instagram each day. And what do people post? You know, they post everything from their food <laughs> to what they're doing. I actually initially posted a lot of um, scenery pics from being out on the trails, hiking, riding my bike. Um, and the great thing is what it does is it allows you to share your life and build connections. There are people within my organization that when I went to a conference in Greensboro in August, we sought each other out because we've been having these great conversations on social media that started with Instagram and you know even messaging each other on Facebook like where are you I think I just saw you so it, it really is more than what a lot of you know people who are still fighting the technology things like oh it's so stupid to just post pictures of your food well no you know that is a great um, platform for what we call social shopping and it's just another way to build connections because as a business owner someone else who likes you know one of my favorite restaurants in town is a place to be seen called Elsa's downtown Milwaukee. Elsa's on the park, and they have the best grilled cheese ever to me. So people might resonate with that, and you'd be amazed at some of the comments that you get. So next slide, please. So who's posting? Everybody's posting, but the vast majority of people on Instagram are between the ages of 18 to 29. There's not much of a point difference between females and males, and most people on Instagram have some college and uh, and or are a college graduate. Um, incomes are really d diverse. Um, 
the one thing that does stand out is people with incomes of 75000 or higher say that they are most likely to use the app and people who use Instagram use it daily and several times a day. This isn't in the slide, so this is a bonus. I'm going to give you guys a little nugget that I knew yep. and it was validated with data the other day for me. And that is the best time to post on Instagram is after 9 o'clock. It is between the hours of 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. Instagram is for night owls. <laughs> it is wow. for... Yeah, it, it, you know what? It speaks to a huge trend that's happening in America right now. I was listening to um, Brene Brown and the power of vulnerability earlier today, and she talked about exhaustion being a badge of, uh, a badge of honor and productivity being, um, uh, I can't even remember the word right now, but basically what's going on right now is we have this huge trend in America where everybody is an insomniac, you know, um, if you look on Instagram, you look on Facebook, everybody's up all night. We're even hashtagging now about that vamp life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that, but it, it's something that I stumbled on because sometimes I do have problems with insomnia, and I, I will post a pic at 4 a.m. and get 20 likes. It's just, it's just weird. Well, so, think about uh, it. You're, you're on a, and this is something that, you know, as, a, as an entrepreneur, you have to kind of balance yourself health-wise because, you need that that rest for your body to you know run your business, think clearly, and all mm -hmm. that. But you know uh, it's worldwide, right? So you right. know the U.S. is is just one factor of, of the business. And to your point, you've got Australia, and, and I know in MLSP we've got that. We've got people mm -hmm. in New Zealand, et cetera. So you can no longer just accommodate you know your standard you know Eastern and, and Pacific Mountain Time. You know, time frame. So you, you absolutely. That's like you're all up in my head right now, Kevin. That's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. So thank you for sharing that. So the one thing that another thing that stands out about Instagram versus, like, say, a Twitter or or Pinterest, where like 80, 70 percent of content is reposting or or repinned. If, oh, about 56 percent of women and 48 percent of men say they post original content over curated content. Hmm. Um, so that's and when you think about it, you're taking the picture. You know, you're 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 at the beach. You're taking a picture of the sunset. You know, you're at a, your your child's recital. You're taking a picture. You know, you just made a great meal. It's a new recipe. You tried it out, so you want to take a picture of it. And the one thing that I want people to walk away with from here, and again, this is an slide, so ding, 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 is when you talk about social media, content is king, and Instagram allows you to create content. And by creating content, this is how, when you search my name, I come up on the first page of Google. Did you catch that, Kevin? I caught that. That's an awesome feat. Uh, not many can make that claim. Yes. So by using your own content on social media, that's how you get to a cloud score of 70 and end up on the first page of, of, of Google is because you're using hashtags and you're using your own content and you're not simply just reposting. Reposting is good and it has its place, but you want to be doing the majority of your content um, that's original, original and, content. And it's amazing that how the search engines index that stuff and know it right mm -hmm. off the bat. It's, it, right. It's amazing. Right. Exactly. And, and the search engines, you know, like we were talking about the other night, backlinking, with, with Google and all that stuff is null and void. The search search engines are being driven by social media. Yeah. So I don't know if you're old enough to remember, but remember when you used to do those slides at school and they, the little bell would ding and you have to do the next slide? So ding. There you go. All right. So why Instagram? Because it's a, a unique and visual way to tell stories, build connections, and that artistic content creation is key that it can be shared across other media. So it can be shared on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Foursquare. Okay, so next slide. And so what I've developed and modified are these five R's to Instagram marketing. So your posts need to be relevant. You need to show respect. They need to resonate with others. It needs to be focused on building relationships. And I thought I corrected that, but that should not be results. That should be your reputation. The last R should be reputation. Wow, very important. Yes. Next slide, please. So when we talk about relevance, okay, um, the one thing we want to talk about some key things you need to make sure. You need to choose a name, um, and I originally started being branded with my cosmetics company that I partner with, Motives. It was Motives Mira. 
and I decided to change it to Tamara Hamilton in the last few weeks because what you really want to do is you want to have consistency across platforms. My Pinterest was Tamara Hamilton because I had done a whole lot on that before I started business. I was not redoing that. I had a Twitter Tamara Hamilton, my personal Facebook page. I started a business Facebook page um, that is now growing upwards of close to 2,500 followers um, for hot chocolate. And then I just recently launched Tamara Hamilton, which is moving along as, as we speak. And so I wanted to have that name be able to be similar and you want the same or a similar picture so people can recognize you across platforms. Now the picture to me isn't as necessary to be the exact same picture across platforms anymore because everybody is doing those little buttons on all of their, their sites to so you can get to all the different social media. Um, so that's not as important. Um, but then you also want to have your profile and on Instagram uh, it's great to have a way for people to contact you. You'll see emails in a lot of people's profiles, but you want a really nice and brief, succinct description of, of what you do. So mine says, entrepreneur, mentor, coach, and curator. I'm into personal development and lifestyle. And one of my favorite quotes, life isn't about creating your, life isn't about finding yourself, life is about creating yourself. And then a live link to um, one of my, my landing pages. So that's when we talk about relevance, okay? So it's relevant because one, you know how to contact me, you know my name, and you know what I'm about. Two, you can see my pictures. If you have a business, please do not make it so that people cannot access your pictures. Because the entire purpose for social media is to be able to engage with others. And I cannot engage with you if you like my post and then I go to go back and reciprocate and look through and see what you're about and I can't see it. For one, to be honest with you, it's kind of weird to me because that's what social media is. It's kind of like you want to be a warrior, you want to watch me, but you don't want me to see what you're doing. That's kind of weird. Right? Transparency right? these days is yes. uh, so, so, so huge versus in the older days when I was growing up, everything was like secretive and you, you, you didn't do it. And nowadays, you're penalized if you don't have that transparency. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing that I found out, okay, and, and I understand where, where people are come from. One is you have to remember the, the majority of people on Instagram still are women, and so we do have security issues. So when you look at that phone number, what do you see about that phone number? I don't know, Evan. You you pick something up. I mean, I obviously you've got your name in there for the last. Yeah, time. you have. That's a I, Google my, Voice number. That's a Google Voice number. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so there's some safety and security there. Okay. Gotcha. And the other thing that people want is the ability to keep their content their own. So that's very simple. All you have to do is add in add a watermark to your pictures if you're that concerned about it. And you can see that on some of my pictures if we get a, if we have enough time to go through them. So yeah. when we talk about relevance, it's native to each platform. So while you can share to other platforms, every picture that you post on Instagram should not be showing up in your Instagram in your um, in, in your Instagram feed. Should not be showing up in your Facebook feed. Should not be showing up in all your other feeds because then why go to each different social media, you know, venue? If you're somebody like me who was in most of them. Now, some people have their one and they stick to it. But then there are people like me that will go out and, and venture out. So kind of have so, variety for unique yeah. variety for each plat social platform that you're targeting. And each one has its own set of rules. You can post more frequently and closer in time span together on Instagram and Twitter than you can on Facebook and people won't get upset with you. Gotcha. And the, you can uh, use more uh, hashtags as well yeah. on Instagram than you can even on Twitter. Real quick on this slide, can you touch, I think uh, we had talked about, the. speaking of relevance, the percentage of real phone numbers, you know, that are used on Instagram versus, say, other social platforms. I think you were sharing some stats with me on that. Um, I will tell you that I don't know a stat um, per se, but I will tell you from having reached out to people based on their Instagram profile, for one, they're a business owner, so it's like putting a fake number in the yellow pages, in the, back in the days of yellow pages. So they're, 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 they're numbers. They're very, very much real. Yeah. They're very much real. What a lot of people will do is they'll use their, their Keek, which is a KIK. It's, a, it's a, an internet um, a mobile phone application where you can kind of privately message back and forth. Um, you know, they'll use their email address. Uh, I've experimented with all of them, and my landing pages seem to do the most. 
the most work um, for me in getting in contact with with people, and then from there we build the relationship and exchange other other points of contact. Wow, that's great. Yeah. That's awesome information. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, the, I want to really drive in on the personal versus commercial because I experiment a lot. I experiment with hashtags. I've experimented with all kinds of things. I've had social media ADD. And you want to keep it personal. You know, we talked about this the other day, Kevin, and what, what drives people to my page and what will make somebody like if they've been off of Instagram for two weeks and, and if they go back and post uh, like every single pic that I posted is they like me. They, they, for what, there's something that I put out there that resonates with them, and they like me. They, it's like they're watching. Like there are people that literally I can make a posting, and within seconds they like it. You know, and I can tell how, how frequently and what their cycle is based on on, on their on their likes. Um, and there are some other apps that I can can share in, in personal coaching sessions, as we'll talk about when we get to the offer, that allow you to know who you're, especially when you have close to 4,000 followers like I do. Um, who your top 10 or who your top 20 followers are that, that are engaged with you because you want to keep those people engaged. Absolutely. And then, you know, it's about building that back of the house, behind the scenes, kind of giving that VIP view and, 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 and treatment, you know. Um, even to like tonight, I shared some very personal information that I have not divulged to, to others. Um, you know, just really that, that kind of thing really builds relationships, but you do it authentically. Yeah. You know, you don't do it for the likes, you don't do it for the, you know, 15 minutes of fame. You do it because, you know, you care about people and they want to hear your story. They want to know. So that back of the house and behind the scenes, like Starbucks is doing a great job with that. They show their local baristas and talk about them and the great work that they're doing. And that really kind of, kind of gives it what we used to call in the bank, that big national presence, but still yet a small town, small town feel. Yeah. No, absolutely. Some very, some excellent nuggets here. So, you know, folks, if you're you're not writing this stuff down, you, you really should be taking some notes. Uh, you know, that's really the intentions here. You know, Tamira is really uh, opening up some things. Maybe you know them, maybe you don't. But, uh, you know, I, I always find that even if I know stuff, if I write it down with a little bit different, uh, you know, angle to it, it, it helps me out in uh, re either reinforces or gives me a new, you know, brainstorming technique to, uh, you know, try something a little bit unique and different. So, uh, you know, I appreciate you sharing some of those nuggets with the, with the audience, Tamara. No problem. Next slide, please. We don't have any more to go. <laughs> that was the second r and And the third one, respect. Keep it classy always. You're leaving your digital footprint, and you want it to lead to what that final R is, a great reputation, your professional reputation. So I know we're all professional. We don't have to spend a lot of time on this. I will say if you're in network marketing, there are a couple major no-nos, okay? You don't go on other people's pages trying to recruit them. You don't go on other people's posts and, you know, send people, try and send people to your page so you get, a, get credit if they have questions. You respect that person's space. It's like, Kevin, if you had a brick and mortar and we were both, say, um, TV salesmen to go back, you know, to be retro. Uh, say we both own TV shops, but we were friends and in the same industry, and we both went to conferences together. And I just happened to be on the side of town, and I stopped in your store, and somebody's asking me about a TV. I'm gonna help them, but I'm not gonna say, "Oh, come all the way across town and go to my store and buy it." <laughs> you know, that's just kind of weird, right? So just, you know, don't be weird. Just do what, do the right thing. And, and your reputation is, is priceless. It's an intangible asset, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So next slide, please. Resonance, all right? So, um, oh, you didn't get the new slides. That's okay, though. So it needs to, they, this, it, your posts need to resonate with, with people. What will happen is people will start tagging you on things. This is a picture of... Um, I love big cats. I love lions and, and, and tigers, and they have a very special meaning to me, especially the lion as of lately. So there, uh, somebody tagged me on this uh, picture that I just absolutely love. And the one on my right is very similar to a picture that I posted, and then they found a picture that complemented it and then just showed that the opposite, and they tagged me on it. And that means you resonated with somebody. You know, there was really a strong emotional appeal 
And I, instead of physical appeal, I, I, I like to call it visually stunning. If you look through my Instagram page, you will see that I use a lot of color or black and white. And there's always themes. For at least nine pictures, there's usually a theme. Um, and using the filters, and sometimes you don't use filters. The last picture I posted was no filter. It was saying we're going live in five for this event. But it was a really, the lighting was great. It was a great angle. It was a great shot. If it's not a great shot, don't post it. <laughs> <laughs> there are times when I think it's a great shot, but no matter what I do, I just cannot doctor that puppy up, and it's dead in the water, and you just have to leave it dead in the water. And the thing, and like Gary Vaynerchuk talked about it in Jab, 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 Right Hook, you want to make it almost like it's really, really artsy, and that goes back to that uh, personal versus commercial. You don't want it to look like it was in, you know, of the Sunday circular or um, you know something that they can find anywhere else you really want to leverage the filters and there are other apps that you can use very few of my apps of my posts have no no filter or or they very rarely where they only filter through through Instagram but that's because I'm more of an advanced user and really leveraging pop culture like one of my favorite things to talk about and the numbers came out today they're, they're online Beyonce dropped an album last week that nobody, we knew something was coming, we knew she was working on stuff, we had no idea it was going to drop, two, you know, two weeks before Christmas, and I mean, she posted on Instagram, and all of her celebrity friends posted, and she just said, surprise, and did a little 15 second video um, showing this visual album that's available on iTunes, and the album is, is available in stores, and like, old school CD format, which I guess people actually still buy those, starting tomorrow, and she's already sold a million copies, all through word of mouth and moving it from word of mouth to click and mouse. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. When I say there's no better time to be an internet marketer and, you know, make money on social media, I am not kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and of course, she has that tribe built over her years of, you know, being a celebrity and really grinding. She's one of the hardest working hustlers I've ever you know, known anything about her in, in Jay Z Bolt. It's just absolutely amazing. But I think that could be can be can be replicated. I, I really do. Um, and using the hashtag, you can use up to thirty hashtags in each comment or the first time you make a post. If you use more than that, it will erase. So you'll post a picture with no hashtag. Posting a picture with no hashtag is almost kinda like not posting it. You know, some of your friends and people who follow you might like it, but you will, your hashtag is how you draw more and more people to your to your page. It's also how you get out and you find people. If you don't have a, the number of followers that you want, it's really, really simple. Click on a hashtag on one of your posts and go through, and if you curate it and you repost it, go through. You look, look, search for that hashtag, and then go through and find all the exact same picture and like them. And they will know why you like that picture, and they will come to your page, and they will like it, and follow you, and talk to you, and it's just, it's 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 just a lot of fun. It really, really is. You know, keep it positive, keep it comical. Um, you know, inspiration again, a huge trend that I'm just seeing um, based on my experience online. And I've got nearly four thousand followers on um, Instagram, three hundred on Tumblr, four hundred on Pinterest, twenty. 300 on um, one Facebook page and nearly 2,000 personal friends and, and, and family members. And one of the, the trends that, that I see is people are looking for inspiration. I mean, yes. when, when you say a president ran on hope, they're, they're, he, he listened. He had his ear to the ground, and he knew what people were looking for. They wanted inspiration, and, and they wanted hope. And, you know, halfway through... A second term, it, it's still it's still applicable. Next slide, please. Do we have any questions? Any any comments, Evan? Uh, no, you're good. Keep going. You you got a couple fans giving you some shout outs though. So. Oh, I love it! I can't wait to go over there and see it and respond to everybody. Okay, so the fourth R is relationships. Um, Instagram is a great way to build relationships. You can drive your Facebook fans to your um, Instagram using gamification, um, which basically is a fancy word for having contests. Um, you you know by sharing to Twitter, people are going to click on the link and end up on your page. 
Um, and, okay, okay, ding, 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 ding. Another tidbit. Okay, you can extend the shelf life of your Instagram post by going going back to the post and clicking the little three dots down in the lower right hand side side and click share again and retweet it and people will come back to your page and like that post. It's, it's, it's really amazing and that's one of the things too you can tell when somebody has done a search for you versus just kind of stumbled upon because maybe they saw it in a friend's feed of what the activity that they've done or um, you know search for a, a, you can tell if they search for a hashtag if it's been like you know 30 weeks since you made this post and all of a sudden this person is liking your picture and next thing you know they're going through and I will tell you I have been woken up on a Saturday morning from my phone buzzing from people going through two to three people just going through and liking post after post after post after post and they're doing it because they just really enjoy the content and I'm not saying that for bragging rights it just amazes me when it when it happens and, and it just makes it just gives me that much more drive to go out and get really good content to post. Um, yeah, this is I didn't like this slide. I want I changed this. I didn't like the words breeding grounds, but um, it's there now for everybody to see. So we just talked about searching hashtags and commenting and liking other photos. And you know, you want to make new friends, you got to be friendly. And the best way to do that is to get out and get you know get on other people's posts and pages and start talking to them. Don't just like it, you know, leave a comment and they'll, they'll engage with you. It's, it's really amazing and you'll know you're really onto something when you start to see people, um, you know, leaving content, uh, comments and then tagging their friends on, on your posts because it, that's really what it boils down to. Like I said, great content equals followers and you, what you're going to do is you're going to get those people who are insanely passionate and will like post after post. Sometimes I think I could post like the weirdest thing, and, pe and in fact, I tested it a couple weeks ago. There was something I posted on Facebook. I don't even remember what I was thinking when I posted it, but people were liking it. I'm like, why are you liking that? Do you even know what that means? And yeah, I mean, just you get those people who are just insanely passionate, and they follow you, and it's about you. Next page, please. All right. You know, like I said, my daddy said, if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. The results, you know, um, is it, the social proof. Um, you know, this the slide should say, um, and well, I'll make up a, a slide share and, and send it out, um, and put it out on your page, Kevin. Um, but it's about your reputation. Your reputation is your digital footprint. It is your brand, and you know, companies, network marketing opportunities, all that comes and goes. But at the end of the day, it's your name, it's your face, and you have to protect that. And right now, I don't know the dollar amount, but my name is worth something. You know, the ability to draw people to this hangout and listen, and they're they're giving shout outs and and that that is social proof, and it comes with a responsibility. So you have to do it, um, you know, very valiantly, very dil diligently, and very methodically and, and, and really treat it like it, it is what it is. It's a gift. It is something that's been bestowed upon you and you have to treat it with the utmost grace and professionalism. Yeah, it's good to know that at least uh, integrity and um, you know, responsibility ha has not um, you know, left the arena so in yeah. certain times you know, because it is so huge. Uh, you know, because if you can't portray that and, and along with the transparency, uh, you know, you won't have uh, a following for very long. Absolutely. It's 100%, 100% true. And the, th the thing is to pay attention to what people like. You know, I, I tell my followers that all the time. I, I, I just give you guys what you like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you, I notice they like black and white pictures of me, so I post black and white pictures of me. You know, I've even had people, you know, one of my best friends growing up from, from childhood, like, Hit us, hit us with the black and white. <laughs> you know, they they like for me to put my face on like on this picture here. You know, to create something that these are my thoughts with a with a picture of of my face. I, that's not vanity driven. That is, I know what people like and what resonates with them, and I, and I give it. I don't give it to them. Very nice. Yeah. Next slide, please. And I am a little vain, though. I won't lie. I mean, I do sell <laughs> cosmetics after all. So as a huge thank you for joining us tonight, the first 10 responses to hit the green button on my page will get an audit of their Instagram account and it'll include 30 minutes of personal coaching for me to increase your follower engagement and even lead to sales. Because if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. 
So and that's you, clearly spelled out on your uh, Tamara Hamilton page. There's because I think you had two it's buttons, on, right? It's on hangoutwithtamara.com. But are there two buttons or is there just the one? There's two buttons. It's it should be updated. Okay. And which one do you want them to click for that audit? Um, it should say info request info. Okay. Yeah, it may be one button, but it should be request info. I know I updated it. Okay, it folks, so make sure you yeah. click the request info and uh, get your free audit, man. It sounds like she can uh, really help you out in this uh, domain and, and set you straight if you're uh, having issues or if you just need a, a, a slight tweak, uh, you know, resonate with uh, Tamira and uh, you could uh, start getting Did we lose fans, you know? him? <laughs> Well, the big thing is having fun. I mean, and that's that's the, the big thing is I just have a lot of fun and, um, you know, just, you know, really sharing my story and, and, and my life with, with people. Some of the things, some of the big things you see on Instagram are is a lot of fitness and, and weight loss. And when you talk about why cosmetics, because it was an open ground on Instagram, weight loss and fitness, I mean, you've got everybody and their mother doing that on there. You can't even find a customer on there because all you're going to find is other people, you know, doing doing their product. And it does have its place. I'm still huge into eating whole, clean foods and, and, and working out. You cannot be an entrepreneur in today's world. You, like you said, you have to keep your health up. You have to keep your, your temple moving. Um, but cosmetics in, in what um, I've done with um, depicting that product and what the company has also picked up and done has just been really, really revolutionary, and and you haven't seen it. And you yeah. know we have a very um, unique position with a hundred percent customizable yeah. product. Being that handsome else and beautiful has. has not changed uh, over the centuries. <laughs> There's no, a, it still counts for a whole lot. It really does. Yeah. <laughs> um, so everybody's looking for an improvement. Yes, but you still have to have substance behind it, and that's you know what my business is about. It's from beauty, beauty from the inside out, and, and just really working on the total, your totality. That piece of stewardship is the totality. Great, great, great stuff. Uh, you know, I, I think folks have probably had a sufficient time to you know capture the the website uh, there or go to it. Uh, you know, just an awesome amount of information that you've uh, portrayed and, and, and shared. I know. One of the frustrations I have with Facebook is it's a news feed or, or it, even my posts on my timeline. It, it just all kind of disappears, whereas what it sounds like, you know, I've never gone to Instagram, but, you know, they're pinned. They're all hanging there, and, you know, you can, mm -hmm. can kind of take a, a visual snapshot and, you know, really kind of uh, see lots of information in a split second, whereas, you know, Facebook, to me, you know, compared to some of these um, – you know, Pinterest and Instagram are, uh, it, it, Facebook's a little clumsy from that perspective because you have mm -hmm. to kind of scroll through and, and do all that stuff, whereas, bam, you know, Instagram's right there in your face with people to dial in whatever they're looking for. 100%. And what, we're, what we'll do, if you'll have me back, is once I get with these 10 respondents and we do these audits and, you know,